Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out why my service engine light is on. So to do this, what you need to do is uh, you need to have a scanner. Uh, these modern cars since 96, they have uh, the codes that get stored into a computer. So what we'll do is we'll look at our scanner. Alright guys, so to figure out what the trouble code is for the, the light on the dash, we have here what is called an OBD2 scanner. Since 96, most manufacturers uh, carry the OBD2 system. Something like Mercedes or BMW or high end will have something different, but for most, of the, for most things, this is the scan tool that you need. This one cost me about $80.00. And the first time I used it, I paid it off. I think now to pull a code out of shop is like $110 plus tax. But I also kept the ligature here as well, just to make it easy to use. But to use this scanner, what you need to do is you need to plug it into the port. So on this car here, the port is right there. Yeah, you can see the pins. So what you do is you plug the scanner in. Okay, that's plugged in. And then you just turn the car to the on position. You do not start the car. All right, so our trouble code is PO131. All right, so the code of uh, PO131, it's the same code for every car. That is the idea of this system. So that is saying that there is a problem with the oxygen sensor. So what I'll do is I'll get the car into the garage. I'll let it cool down. And then we will check the front oxygen sensor first because it's easier to get to. Test it and we'll see if that's a problem. All right, guys, so this is our plastic cover the oxygen sensor is here in the back so that is it right there and then this wire comes off it so this whole uh, vertical piece is um, the oxygen sensor so the idea of the groove it'll fit over the wire and then you can get it on. So guys, I would put a little bit of uh, penetrating oil on this and go gentle, don't just crank the hell out of it. Try to, try to loosen it off with a little bit of finesse. All right guys, this is our tools list. We have our socket set here, extensions, gloves, wrenches. I don't know if I'm gonna need them, but let's be prepared anyway. And then this is, a oxygen sensor socket so this is a 7 8 the same as 22 millimeter I believe they're all pretty much the same size the only difference between this and a 7 8 socket is it doesn't have the uh, groove here cut for the wires to take it out otherwise it's the same thing as a 7 8 socket but as of now guys this is what I think I need to do this job all right guys, so when you're going to start, always check to make sure the size. This is a 13 millimeter, and this is a half inch. The half inch fits tight, uh, tighter. I thought this car was metric, but at least these bolts here are, are imperial. But it's a, it's a bad reason to strip something because you put the wrong socket on. All right, so this is our the wire for our arc our oxygen sensor. So the the wiring harness is here. There's a tab that you need to pull on the top side. You pull that out, and then you can disconnect it. All right, guys. So this is our socket on the extension. So 
So what we're going to do is we will slide it on so the wire has a space to go. All right, so our ratchet's in place. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. All right, so we're going to test our oxygen sensor. This is a four wire. It has two white ones on the bottom. It has a black and a gray. So the two white ones are heater wires. To test it, what we're going to do is test the resistance by uh, uh, hooking up our multimeter to this end. All right, so this is our multimeter ohms with the omega symbol there. This is resistance. So we're gonna go down to the lowest to 200. And then all we're going to do is touch our red and black to the pins and we'll see what it says. All right, so 5.5-ish 5 5 ohms. So if it's not open, which would be infinite, there's no breaks in the wire, so that is fine. So what we'll do now is we're going to test our voltage. So we're gonna put it to our volt setting. We're gonna to go to two volts. And what we're going to do is we're going to test to see how much, how many volts this sensor produces. Let's see if it's working or not. All right, so it's around seven and a half, which it should be around one volt. All right, so I'm gonna put the oxygen sensor back in. Make sure that you put a little bit of uh, anti-seize. All right, so it wasn't the oxygen sensor, so I'm going to move on to testing the exhaust. So the exhaust runs down here, and then here, and then back in behind the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a vacuum, a shot vac, I am going to blow air into the system, and then with soapy water, I'm going to spray everywhere and see where we get bubbles. This is basically the same technique as testing for, for gas. All right, so to test the exhaust, this is the tool list. This is what I think I need to do this. So I got a couple ramps. I have a shop vac. I have a spray bottle. And then I have a couple rags to plug the other exhaust pipe. So the plan here is to drive the car up onto the ramps. And then I will use the shop vac to blow air into the system through the exhaust pipe at the back. And then I'm gonna spray the soapy water and we'll see if we find any leaks. All right, so the car is up on the ramps. Guys, be sure to always chuck your, uh, your rear tires so your car doesn't move. All right guys, so we're going to set up our vacuum. So this is our shop vac. It sucks in through the front and blows out the back. So I'm gonna connect my hose to the back. I'll put the hose and then I'll use a rag as a seal for the other side. And then I will stuff the rag into the other side to block that off. 
So the idea here is this is our pump and this is going to blow air into our system and when we spray with soapy water we will see bubbles. Alright so this is our exhaust manifold. One, two, three and then it goes up the side underneath here around the block and then the three in the back connect into it and go down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray water here, here along the pipe and then we're going to see if we can find any bubbles. All right, so we'll continue on with that. Everything looks good. Well, I'm gonna have to get up onto the car. All right, so I'm gonna spray that. And then that is where the, uh, the oxygen sensor is there. So I'm gonna spray this, and then once this is all done, I'm gonna go underneath the car. I can't hold the camera and uh, spray at the same time, but I'll spray it and we'll see what we find. Okay, so we have a leak. All right, this is our material and tools list. Gloves, a wire brush, and then this is an epoxy that you mix up and you put on the on the crack or the brake. It says it's good up to 2000 Fahrenheit. But this is what I'll be using on this job. All right, so that's where I'm going to sand. I don't think there's enough room to get the camera in to watch me do this. But we'll just look at the results. All right, so that's what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the epoxy between the two, and we'll see what it looks like after I'm done. All right, so this is what this stuff looks like. I've never used this before. All right, so this is what it looks like. It's the greenest. So all, all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put it on my finger and just uh, spread it along the crack. All right, so you see all the gray between the two? That is right, right there, all that gray there. That is my patch job. So it says that I need to, need to wait three or four hours. I'm gonna clean up for tonight and then we'll Take it for a test drive in the morning. All right guys, we're gonna go take the car for a test drive. So the key thing that you need to keep in mind here is make sure that you delete the code so you don't have a light on the dash. So our light is out. So there's two ways you can delete the code. You can either use a scanner to, lead, to delete the code or you can also unplug one of the leads. The thing about unplugging one of the leads is that you can uh, lock out your radio. If you don't know the code, then you have no way to uh, unlock your radio again. So that's something to be aware of. But make sure that you delete the code so the code is out of the system and it won't affect the car's performance when you do your test drive. All right guys, I took the car for a test drive. Everything seems to work well now. I have no problems. I notice as soon as I pulled away from the curb, I would have a lack of power, but everything seems to be good. It, I took it for a solid test drive. I didn't notice anything. No trouble codes came up, no lights on the dash. So I believe that this is all done now. All right guys, uh, the time on this job. The time was about five hours. Now, I've every single time I've ever had a check engine light that's related to the oxygen sensor it's always been the oxygen sensor so this is the first time i've ever had to look for and address uh, an exhaust leak but everything looks good i'm really happy with it 
the uh, the cost on this job. The paste itself was about ten dollars. Really, it's not the material; it's the diagnosis that is going to be the expensive part of this job. But this is a first for me. It took a lot longer than I wanted to, but again, that's how we're going to get better. We're going to try new things and not not be afraid to fail. From there. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope something here is going to help you to be better working on your own car when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.